Hey, thanks for joining me. We're going to look at two of my favorite comics from back in the day that did two things, as I recall, um, that were the first time uh, for me. First time that I think I ever really paid attention and noticed the artwork of Wills Protasio, the guy drawing the X Factor books at the time. Um, he had something. He was, you know, he's one of those guys with that big visual style that made him become one of the image founding guys. And it was at least, you know, asked to come along before he had like a personal tragedy that had, had to have him step out for a little bit before he could really get going with his uh, comic again. But he had this big, dynamic, interesting style that was very much in the Jim Lee, Mark Silvestri kind of style. So these books were the introduction for me to Wills Protasio. If I'd ever seen his artwork before, I didn't, I don't know that. I don't know it. This is what made me pay attention. And this is a story that made me think that Iceman was kind of awesome. Iceman got kind of a shine here to do some cool shit. And one thing that Wills Protasio did that I love to this day, and I think is the defining look to Iceman that I don't think anyone does anymore is the way that he does these, like, ice rings around his hands. It's such an interesting way to show his powers. Like, he's got the cold emanating off his hands, so it kind of manifests as, like, this... like this. There's, like, an invisible ring of cold energy around his hand that then freezes off it. And, and I, I don't know how to explain it. It's such an interesting visual. I love it. This is my favorite interpretation of Iceman. I think it's really, really cool. So the story in these books simply is that Iceman, Bobby Drake, he's dating this girl. Um, I always thought the name was interesting. Her name is Opal, O-P-A-L. And um, I remember that um, Wills Protasio said in an interview, somebody interviewed him and asked him, who is his favorite character to draw? And he said Opal from X Factor, Bobby Drake's girlfriend, because I... I'm trying to remember what her ethnicity is. I think, I mean, I think she's Japanese, but he's like, Japanese women are beautiful. So he's just loving drawing this character, which I get. But it is interesting to have a comic artist say, not say like, I love drawing Spider-Man or Superman or Wolverine. He likes drawing like the girlfriend of one of the characters. Anyway, Iceman and this girl, they're, you know, they're in a relationship. They're cool. They're in love. Um, they're going, they're in a, going to a restaurant and this place just erupts an explosion. These like cybernetic samurais or whatever, ninjas, samurais, whatever. They show up, punch Iceman, knocks his ass out and they're there to get her. Um, so Louis Simonson, plot and writer and Wills Protasio plot. So he's helping write the story. And so I think that's interesting and he's the artist. So he's doing pencils and inks. It's interesting to me because Wills Protasio's artwork, especially as, as he progressed into the future, and especially these days, he over, I, I'm going to say over render, which implies a negative, though I, that's kind of a personal preference thing, but it's much less rendered. Um, it's, it's more simple line work in places in this. His big dynamic choices of shots and angles and all that type of stuff are still on display here, but he's still not quite, you know, he's, he's always developing as an artist. And, um, I say this a lot. I think I like his older stuff better than his current stuff. I, I know that's kind of, I don't know. It, every artist like has stages and, and like different eras in their work. And there's something about this stuff here that had an interesting vibe to it that I kind of like a little bit better. Anyway, all these like samurai warriors, cyberpunk samurai show up, knocks, you know, Iceman out. They're there to capture her. And um, they're like, this Gaijin is our rival. Uh, this is the guy that is, uh, this girl is dating and we're supposed to be, you know, concerned about this weakling so they pick him up and throw him out a window so i think that's actually pretty awesome and the girl's freaking out like holy shit they just threw her boyfriend out a window and so they they're gonna take off they're easily like handling the situation off they go and so the girl she freaks out she starts fighting clawing at them and um it pisses off the one that's holding her and he's gonna teach her a lesson but there's this guy um Hero is his name, and he stops them and is like, no, no, we're not hurting her. We're not here to cause her harm. And then he comes to her and says, you know, you must return to your grandfather. He's after you. 
And that's why we are here. And I could tell that Protasio, again, he really loved drawing this girl, but he likes this guy, this villain. And you're getting the hint here that he's on the bad guys team, but he's got a little bit of a heart and a little bit of soul. Uh, you know, he's not just a completely heartless bad guy. Let's see how that all plays out. Meanwhile, what happened to Iceman? This is one of my favorite, again, representations of power for Iceman. I do have to say that I've always thought that Wills Protasio, for all the... He, he does have some weird, quirky things about his artwork that some people don't like. I dig it. His musculature, his shots, his choices of angles and stuff like that. But his way of rendering, like energy and mutant powers like the way he does like again there's these ice rings around his hands and shooting ice so he can create a little ice bridge but then like lasers that we'll see the bad guys later on shooting energy lasers the way that he shows gene gray's mental te uh, telekinesis just the way that he draws energy and the representation of powers is really really neat We'll get back into that. So Iceman, he's falling. He comes back to consciousness. And I love this shot of him, just normal human him. And then he like, his ice powers are erupting, like coming out of his mouth. And it's like, it just like the ice just explodes out of him, coats his body. He shoots out his ice bridge, comes back and is like, she's kidnapped. So he's like, I've got to find her. I always like this shot of him here. A little bit later, he's back with X Factor, the team. I always thought that he drew a badass Cyclops. I mean, I think that when I think of X Factor and the version of the team that I like, admittedly, this is my first exposure to them. So maybe I'm a little biased. But when I think of X Factor being awesome, it's the original five, you know, members that were the original five X-Men team that are now the X Factor team. But it's drawn by Wills Protasio. I think that his version of them looks good. I kind of dig these costumes with the blue and then the yellow X on them. And I think his Cyclops looks great. Beast looks awesome. Archangel looks great. He just he just had a vibe for them that just worked. Anyway, Iceman's got to figure out what the hell's going on. He, so he's like, I got to track her down. So he's on the case, you know, trying to find some information of where to go. He uh, finds these people that kind of understand this symbol that they left behind, who it is and where to go. So they send him on, you know, they, they give him a direction. They point him in a way to go. We cut back to this uh, compound and here's the girl, Opal, and his gra her grandfather, this angry guy, is telling her to sit the fuck down and she won't do it. She's being stubborn. So someone else forces her down and he's like, look, um, he, he needs an heir and she's actual family. So she needs to be the one to produce a child to take over his empire. And he's like, here's all these warrior dudes, all these like cyberpunk samurai. You could choose from any of them. And they're all standing there looking awesome. Of course, the main guy hero up front and center looking awesome. I think the symbol is awesome. It's the, the Japanese sun, but like this hand grasping it. Pretty awesome. And she's like, are you fucking kidding me? Just because you say you're my grandfather doesn't mean it's true. I already have a boyfriend. I'm not going to marry one of these idiots. And meanwhile, she uh, finds out that this old lady that's there, she's telling Opal to calm down. You need to do what he says. She's like, why? Who the fuck are you? And she's like, I'm your mother. She had no idea. Meanwhile, back with the X Factor, um, Iceman is, you know, he's like, I've got to go. I've got to go find. He's back. He's back again, talking to the team, saying, I've got to go do this thing. And um, Jean Grey basically is like, I'm coming with you. He's like, you don't think I can handle this? I can handle this on my own. You know, she's like, yeah, I know you can. But we're a team. So I'm coming with you. She hugs him. She's like, I'm here for you. We're a team. All of us don't need to go, but I'm coming with you. I'm going to back you up. I think that's good. I think that's great. So interesting is that they make contact with Wolverine's old former love, Marako Yashida, uh, the reluctant lord of the Yakuza clan, Yashida. And so they make contact with her and she's like, yeah, I know who these guys are. They're a bunch of scum, scumballs and we've been having conflicts with them for a long time. If they captured your girl, this is bad. This is not good. So... We can help you rescue her. We have converging interests. I like this shot of Iceman. This is one of those, like, it's just a, it's an awesome shot. The shadow, the rendering, the face. I don't know. It just looks good. Protasio, he's got something that's awesome. Meanwhile, back with Opal and her grandfather and all these warrior guys are out there, like, training and beating the shit out of each other, trying to show who's the biggest, toughest guy so they can win her heart. She's not interested in it. She's not 
going to have it. So she tries to run away. And once again, um, the, the one guy, Hero, he's like, look, you can't get away from this. You have to choose one of us. She's pointing out that they're all like half cyborg. They're not even, you know, they're... They're not even men anymore. And she's kind of like trapped. She doesn't know how, what she's going to do. She doesn't know how she's going to get away. Back with um, Iceman and Jean Grey with Mariko. They're kind of planning their attack. They've got all these warriors that are gonna, going to join them. they got a, they got a plan. If we all stick to the plan, everything will work out just fine. All right? Everyone stick to the plan. Because now there's this stadium. And all these people are coming here to watch this, like, this big probably like this fighting event. So there, um, Opal is there and all the cyberpunk samurais are in, you know, trench coats there to be protection. And hero, he's looking up again and, um, he's like, God, that guy up there in the stands, that looks just like that, 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 um, the gaijin that we tossed from the window, Opal's boyfriend. He's like, no, that's impossible. I'm just, I'm nervous. And he's like, all gaijin do look the same. Yeah. Racism. Anyway, so the grandfather comes out, got Opal there, and he's like, hey, we're going to do this cool shit. We're going to watch this cool shit. Opal decides to take the opportunity. She screams. She's like, I'm being kidnapped. I'm held against my will. So the grandfather smacks the shit out of her. And this pisses off Iceman. He screams Opal. She sees him, tears in her eyes, blood on her lips. She yells, Bobby. And um, Mariko's like, God damn it, Bobby. God damn it. My men are not in place. We're not ready. This is, is a disaster. So she commands her ninjas to attack. So out of the just nowhere, it's, uh, just a army of ninjas drop down and so the cyberpunk samurai is like in, in the leader hero he's like oh i wasn't mistaken that was him oh no wonder they said he wasn't ordinary he's a mutant that's awesome anyway they're not going to steal our, our lord's granddaughter so he commands his other cyberpunk samurais kill them all and here's another example of what i was talking about with wills Protasio drawing blasting energy like the 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 energy and movement in this panel with like the blast lines and the lasers just blasting out everywhere looks great. I love it. Um, so the ninjas are attacking, trying to, they get this one of these cyberpunk guys and they, the good guys on Mariko's team, they got this big sumo dude and he gets the cyberpunk guy and um, they got him, you know, he chokes him out. It looks like he kills him. Iceman coats one of them in ice. He's like, look, we can stop them without killing them. And so here's the cyberpunk guy encased in ice with just his head sticking out. But then one of the ninjas comes up. He's like, no, no, the, we're, we, we'd be fools to leave such a dangerous enemy alive. Chops his head off and kills him. And so Iceman's in shock. And Hero, he's noticing. He's like, Iceman was trying to spare my, my comrade. He... He's like, God, he's he's got some kind of honor. So Hero's like, I'm not going to shoot him in the back. He he was trying to do an honorable thing. I will not dishonor him or myself by shooting him in the back. So he's like, hey, turn and face me. And so when Iceman does turn, but suddenly a, um, another bunch, a big pile of ninjas come jumping down. And um, within seconds, Hero has just laid them all down. He, they're all down. They're, out, they're dead. So... Um, you know, Iceman's looking, he's got to do, he's got to get him. He's got to get Opal, but the the bad guys teleport out. But just before they do, Hero launches this laser blast and hits Iceman, knocking him down. This is another great, like the, the angle on this body, that is crazy. That is a hard angle to draw. It's an extremely like difficult angle with the body, the head, everything, but it looks great. And I love the way that Protasio renders the ice form. You can tell how he got good at this. Uh, and then he goes on to draw wet works where everyone's coated in that gold liquid metal. And he would render that shiny look. It's kind of like getting the beginnings of that kind of vibe here. I love this arm, the shoulder muscles, the biceps, the forearm, even the hand. Everything just looks awesome. I love the energy and power of that shot. And so now... Now that the bad guys have teleported away with the girl, just the slaughter everywhere. All these ninjas dead, that bloody guys, the, the guy encased in ice with his bloody ass head blown off everywhere. 
And Mariko is pissed as shit. She's like, God damn it. I told you we weren't ready. You screwed up everything. You ruined this, Iceman. And he's like, I know I wasn't thinking, but I've got to get her. I'm going to save her or die trying. So I was really into the story, not knowing much about X Factor, just the basics of the X-Men themselves. I was reading classic X-Men. I was reading Uncanny X-Men. Um, but I love this story. And not knowing anything about the cyberpunk samurais, or, I, I'm like, I'm, I'm into this story. I'm having fun. So, how does it wrap up? Great cover. Great movement. For a woman's heart, one must fall. Love it. So, we kind of picking up basically where the last one ended, where Iceman's like, I'm pissed off. I'm going to get her. I, I'm, no one can stop me. And Jean Grey's like, just calm down. Calm down. He's like, I don't want to calm down. And I'm going, you have to understand this is something you have to do. And she's like, I do understand. Just, you got to be careful. I like these. this picture of Jean Grey. Both of these. I think Potassio does a great Jean Grey. I love this look. It just looks fantastic. So anyway, Opal is is caught again, and so she's back at her grandfather's compound. And again, just looking at this spread, you know, this art, it, it's kind of a weird clash of, it's this newsprint with this kind of flat coloring but this big dynamic art that's just different than a lot of other, you know, the, the image artists that were emerging that would go on to become the image artists. They had this vibe that just looked different in some way. The panel layouts, like Protasio likes to have these open panels where they're just standing with not surrounded, not contained by borders. Big imagery spread across two pages. It looks great. There's just something about it. Um, but sometimes I'm like, God, what, does this look better on a glossy paper with modern computer coloring, or does it look good on this newsprint with these flat colors? Both are true. Anyway, Opal's here, and she's trying to like, well, so Hero's there talking. He's trying to comfort her. He's trying to be nice to her. She's like, look, what can you tell me about my parents? This is my grandfather that's kidnapped me. I don't know my mother or father. Can you tell me about them. So he goes and kind of gives her a basic rundown of mother and father and the situation that they got into. They had a baby and they had to raise her not in this horrible life. So they tried to get her out of there. Um, the husband ended up dead, but the, the girl got, the, the girl was able to get out of the life and, uh, but she didn't know this whole backstory. So just giving a basic rundown of it. Heroes, again, he's being kind of kind to her. He's treating her with kindness and she's she's still pissed off because she should because she's kidnapped she's frightened she's scared and um and she's like what did you want to be did you want to be a mr high-tech ninja man he's like no i wanted to be a poet don't laugh my teacher said i had some ability but i bowed to my father's wishes that i continue in the family business as you must bow to the wishes of your grandfather you must choose one of us and she says who should i choose you no way you're an inhuman thug like she starts insulting him and he just kind of looks down in sadness now i like these shots again i think i was saying where i think protasio he likes drawing these characters this guy he he makes them look awesome and cool and gives them some kind of humanity and he's kind of hurt you know, that she's, he's an inhuman monster. And so he just walks away. Like, he's not going to say anything. And she recognizes that she hurt his feelings. And she's like, shit. But she's like, I can't, I can't take, I can't get wrapped up in this. I can't act like I care about him. I, I got to keep up my, my anger and my strength to get out of this thing. But she recognizes that he's trying to be good to her. Anyway, he shows up and they're kind of testing his cybernetic enhancements, how well they work. They're upgrading him, checking him out, making sure he's in peak fighting form. And he's thinking to himself, he's like, is she right? If I become more machine than man, is, is, is what I'm doing worth it? Is there any honor in this? Am I, am I a good man or am I just a machine doing what I'm told? Anyway, Opal, later that night, she's trying to escape. She's sneaking out into the dark, and her grandfather finds her, and he's just telling her, you can't get away. You're trapped. You're stuck. I love the coloring in this to give it the appearance of nighttime. I love the layouts of this. These little panels leaving big open white blocks of space. She's got these little panels here, open panel here, little ones here, this awesome border around it. Protasio had something that, I mean, Silvestri didn't do this. Jim Lee didn't do this. Portasio had this very unique panel layout vibe that I really like. And um, he's just telling her, like, you're stuck. 
You, you just got to choose somebody. You're not getting away. Knock this shit off. And they're, they're upgrading um, Hero again. They're uh, just, they're, you know, just the story's continuing. I'm kind of wanting to get back into the way it finally wraps up here, where the um, the other warriors are kind of surprised that Hero is in armor to lead the team again because they're like, he spared the mutant Iceman. He had him. He could have shot him in the back and killed him, and he didn't. <coughs> Excuse me. So they're kind of pissed. So, um, but the grandfather sends the team off onto a mission. And um, at the same time, Jean Grey with Mariko and her ninjas, they're infiltrating. They're going to try and get Opal out of there again. Meanwhile, Hero, leading the team, he's out in front. And then the other guys are pissed off. They're like, you know what? Um... So they start shooting at him, and he notices it, and he deflects it, but he gets shot down. And um, he says, you're fast, hero, but not fast enough. My barrage brought you down. You did not kill Iceman when you had the chance. You did not fight for us. So we must assume you're against us and treat you as the enemy as you deserve. And he's saying, Iceman tried to spare Fuse. Fuse is the name of the guy that got killed when he was injured. He's an honorable opponent. I would not shoot him in the back. Oh, and then one of the other bad guys is saying, honors for children, hero. There is no room for you in the Lord Tatsuo's cyber force. Oh, that's interesting. Cyber force. Huh. So they're going to kill him. Iceman shows up out of the back, freezes up the guy's hand just enough just to give him pause for hero to get his own hand free, get his own little laser blades out and stabs him in the guts, kills him. And then this awesome like shot where he like swings both directions with his laser weapon kills them both takes them both down look at the layouts of this panel both of these pages this is the weird panel layouts you have to really know what you're doing to lay out pages like this i see a lot of like amateur artists trying to emulate this stuff without knowing how to really draw but they think they can hide their drawing flaws with doing dynamic page layouts and it doesn't really work that way you got to learn to draw first then you can start breaking the rules but i love this shot bust you know takes them down and Iceman's like so you they were gonna take you out because you refused to shoot me in the back he's like yeah that's what they said but uh you know don't get me wrong you may have saved me I appreciate it but you're still the enemy of my master so we gotta we gotta fight we gotta rumble cut back to ninja's bloody covered sword Mariko's getting the girl out of there and uh, they basically rescued her, but she's like, but shit, where's Iceman? They're like, well, he's out there facing the cyberpunk samurais. She's like, oh my God, I got to go stop him. So she gets there, Iceman and Hero are facing off. And so Iceman ices him up and Hero's like, dude, you can encase me in ice. I've got the power to shatter it and the power to do you injury, even in that form. One thing I started noticing here is that Protasio will like look at he'll do these things or like look at this little tiny figure it's just this little tiny thing but there's so much like power and drama in that he's like I'm super powerful I'm super awesome I can take you down mutant I love it I love all these drawings the way he's able to convey so much power and energy and it can be a big image or it could be a little tiny one I like this picture of Opal's face. I like the picture of Iceman's fa uh, face there. The coloring is really selling it well. The energy and all that awesomeness. So they keep fighting. You know, he's blasting at Iceman. He's putting up like an ice wall shield. Jean Grey's coming down. And, um, you know, Opal's saying, Jean, we, we got to help him. I don't want them to die. Meanwhile, Hero's like, our powers prove... My powers against yours prove nothing, mutant. Such a battle only tests the weapons and not the man. So Iceman shuts off all his ice powers. There he is just standing as a dude. He says, then fight me without powers. Now, again, this is another one of those pages. Of, I love the dynamic page layouts, and I love this figure. I mean, he draws big giant legs and big quad muscles and shit like that. I still love it. And this little tiny drawing carries a lot of power. I like it. It works. It's like a small pause, a quiet moment in the battle. Where he's like, fine, let's get rid of the powers. Let's fight man to man. I love this shot of his face. Opal's like, oh shit, this, no, 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 no. So Hero jumps out of all his armor and ninja kick to the face. Iceman tries to punch back but gets decked. He's saying to himself, Iceman is like, this guy is moving so goddamn fast. What the hell? Great, again, dynamic layouts, great figure work by Protasio. Looks so awesome. 
I always loved this shot. I always thought this looked so awesome. Iceman in the background there, him hunkered down, clearly got the advantage here. He's socking the shit out of Iceman. Again, I love this shot of Jean Grey. I think he draws her so well. And her face, and then like the little hint of energy on her fist, and then that little hint of energy from her forehead because her powers are like mentally based. You know, it comes from her mind. And just that little flash of energy. I think it looks so good. Meanwhile, but Bobby's getting the shit beat out of him. Opal's screaming. She's like, you have to stop. Hero can't shut off his powers. These mechanics are built into him. They're part of him. They're inside his body. There's no shutting them off. He may have ditched his armor, but you can't. He's just a killing machine. Love these screamy faces. And um, Iceman standing there. He's like, he's taking a beating. And Hero, he just kind of stops and he listens. She, and he's like, she's saying he's just a killing machine. He can't be, he can't be stopped. He can't be reasoned with. And it gives him pause. <clears throat> so Iceman, he's like, I got to take this moment. He's distracted. I don't know. But um, Hero, he's saying, he's like, do I fight brilliantly because of all the machine? Do I have any choice? Do I have any control? He's, he's thinking to himself, oh, Iceman has proven himself to be worthy of her. He dropped his powers and he's just a regular human man taking me on, but I can easily defeat him. He's honorable. So he's like, so he's questioning himself. So he's basically stopped fighting. And now he's just letting himself get beat. And he's doing it because he's like, if I'm a man, I have choice. I am in control. I can turn the machine off. And so he's getting socked over and over and over. And Iceman's saying, his arm, my arms are like lead. One more shot left in me. I better make it count. And just a, the biggest, best shot that he could do. A big, hard shot to the chin. Dropping Hero to the ground. And, um, and so Iceman's like, Hero, you just stopped and refused to move or to fight. Why? And he says, to prove to you and to myself that I am a man. Now go while you can. And Opal's like, come with us. Like, come on. Like, don't stay here. And he's like, I cannot. I've sworn an allegiance. This is my honor. This is my life. You just, I can't leave. You need to go. And so, if I can turn the page here. Oh, my Lord. There we go. And so he's sad about everything that's happened. Love the layout of this page. The grandfather's compound is on fire. It's burning down. Iceman and Jean Grey, they're, hold and they're both holding Opal there. And that's the end of the story. I like how the bad guy, like, it's, it's a simple story. We've seen it before. But he's, like, acknowledging that he's a good man. He's got honor. He recognizes good, honorable intentions and let Iceman go and stopped fighting just to prove to himself that he's like, I'm not just a mindless killing machine. So a fun, simple little story in the middle of these X-Men, X-Factor, X-Title stories of just Iceman being awesome, the relationship there, Jean Grey coming with uh, Iceman, which is a unexpected pairing, but I like it. I like the bad guys. Will Spertacio's artwork was just a revelation, man. It looked so damn good. I just loved it. These were some of my favorite books. I'm like, all right, I'm collecting X Factor from now on. And this guy, I want to see his artwork everywhere. And uh, I collected him for a long time. He all through his X Factor run. And then he went on to Uncanny X-Men. And then he, when he went to Image Comics. Um, I do have to say, in terms of art and story that I enjoyed, I believe his X-Men work was my favorite uh, out of all of those, I don't, Wet Works wasn't really well, that well written. Um, he did a series called Stone, which I have. I don't remember anything about it except not thinking it was very good. I was honestly just collecting it for the artwork and I don't know. But as far as like Protasio's art in stories that I still love to this day, these are it. Um, sometimes it kind of sucks when an artist or a creator that you like, they kind of peak early in your kind of reading of their works and their career and they go on and try to do better, but sometimes they just never reach the heights that in your mind and like in my mind, I, sometimes I think this older stuff is just the best version of themselves, but that's just me. Anyway, love this stuff. Great books, very much worthwhile and worth picking up. I got a whole bunch more Potassio X works that we'll be looking at eventually, but I've been wanting to look at these for a long time. And here we are. So 
that's everything I've got for now. I appreciate you checking out my stuff as always. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate it, and I'll see you next time.